Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be a comedy and action movie from 2013 called The Family Plan. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie begins in New York City, where Dan, who excels at selling cars because he pays attention to small details, wins the title of Salesman of the Month again. He enjoys his simple life and looks forward to celebrating his anniversary with his wife, Jessica. They are parents to three children, Na, Kyle, and Max. Na and Kyle frequently argue. Kyle is addicted to video games, leading Dan to encourage him to spend more time outdoors. Na, influenced by her boyfriend, considers changing her college major, which concerns Dan. He attempts to guide his children, but they seem unresponsive to his advice. Dan and Jessica, who enjoy their annual visit to the carnival, experience a fun roller coaster ride. During a tender moment at the carnival, as they share a kiss, someone takes their photo without permission and posts it online. The situation escalates when the person insults Jessica and spills a drink on Dan. Despite the provocation, Dan, who detests violence, chooses to walk away, though Jessica is secretly disappointed by his restraint. At home, Dan struggles with the confrontation, unable to shake it off, while Jessica finds solace in boxing. An accidental punch during training leads to a new friendship with Gwen, a travel agent. Jessica confides in Gwen about feeling trapped and frustrated by Dan's satisfaction with their current life. One day while shopping with Max, Dan notices a suspicious man watching him. Reacting quickly, Dan thwarts the man's attack, impressing the locals and his neighbors who notice a change in him. Back home, Dan reveals a hidden compartment filled with guns, outdated passports, and cash. Alarmed, he contacts Augie, a former associate, to arrange new identities for his family, suspecting they are in danger from Dan's old boss, McCaffrey. It turns out Dan is a former assassin, a fact he has kept hidden from his family. McCaffrey likely discovered him because of the carnival photo. Dan rushes to find Na at an editorial meeting, only to learn she quit three months earlier. After a small bribe, her friend reveals her location under the bleachers. Disappointed that she abandoned her dream, Dan realizes they have no time to dwell on this as they need to pick up Kyle from the chess club. However, he is shocked to find Kyle at their neighbor's house, gaming. With caution, Dan informs his children that they are heading to Vegas unexpectedly, catching Jessica in the middle of her workday. He convinces her to embrace the trip she has long desired, and despite initial hesitations, she grows excited about it. As they prepare to leave the parking lot, they encounter McCaffrey's men. Dan manages to skillfully dodge them as they pursue him, but they quickly catch up. Despite this, Dan skillfully maneuvers to keep his family unaware of the danger. Just in time, Dan drives to his workplace, closes the gates on their pursuers, lifts the car to find a tracker, and narrowly escapes their notice. He cleverly attaches the tracker to his colleague's car, advising him to drive it on the highway, successfully diverting the pursuers. With 33 hours left and his wife and kids actively sharing their trip online, Dan collects all their phones, declaring it a device-free trip, though they now lack directions to their destination. At a travel agency, a little incentive helps them obtain maps. Meanwhile, McCaffrey personally checks Dan's house. Concurrently, Kyle is recognized from his streaming career by a stranger who asks for a picture. Dan spots this and knowing McCaffrey could soon be on their trail, decides to keep driving. McCaffrey escalates his efforts, employing more men to track Dan. His family sleeps through it all even as Dan prepares for potential violence, turning on music through their headphones. He narrowly avoids a crash. After driving all night, Dan is weary but his family awakens just half a mile from the college Na is interested in because her boyfriend, Trevor, attends there. Na insists on visiting the campus which is lively with festivities. On the tour, Dan suspects a German man might be another operative for McCaffrey, but he is caught off guard and attacked by another assailant. After a brief scuffle in a chemistry lab, Dan incapacitates his attacker and rejoins his family. However, Na goes to meet Trevor and finds him cheating on her. Heartbroken, she returns to her family and Dan teaches her a martial arts move which she uses on Trevor. As they continue their journey, Na takes the wheel, thanks Dan for his support, and considers returning to her editorial role. At a small motel, the parents unwind, with Jessica falling deeper in love with this new, unpredictable side of Dan. Dan prepares to reveal everything during a romantic dinner, having received their new identities from Augie, who confirms their one-way flight to Vancouver. Meanwhile, Kyle discusses his streaming ambitions with Dan. Finally, in Las Vegas, Dan meets Augie to collect their new identities, planning to reveal the truth to Jessica while ensuring the kids stay put in the suite. 
Kyle visits the HyperX gaming arena and gains recognition, even meeting Valky and joining her team for the Valorant Finals. Despite his success in the game, McCaffrey's men are close behind. Meanwhile, Na gets comfortable with a gamer who gave up his spot for Kyle. Dan attempts to reveal his true identity to Jessica but keeps getting interrupted and decides to postpone the confession for a bit longer to go gambling with her. After a while, Dan tries to check on the kids but receives no response, prompting him and Jessica to head back. They are fooled by dummies posed as if the children are sleeping, which puts Dan's mind at ease momentarily. Jessica freshens up, turning on romantic music and mood lighting, but at that moment, McCaffrey's men attack. Dan reacts by throwing vodka and shooting it, setting the assailants on fire and neutralizing them. However, Jessica is taken hostage. Dan surrenders his gun but secretly grabs a knife. During the assailant's taunts, he calls Dan Sean, revealing a painful truth to Jessica. Dan neutralizes the assailant and Jessica rushes to the kids' room, only to find the dummies and realizes they must be at HyperX, as Kyle wouldn't stop talking about it. Despite his trash gameplay, Kyle finishes the game with 30 kills, and just as the game ends, his parents arrive to pick them up. Dan finally admits he's a covert assassin, and his ex-colleagues are after him. The children are skeptical until they are shot at while taking cover behind a car. Dan neutralizes the attacker, but her vest keeps her alive, leading to a second confrontation. Dan confesses about his past as McCaffrey's mercenary and his involvement in 42 killings. Dan reveals their new identities. Na is now Molly, and Kyle is Van. After 18 years of lies, the family refuses to accept Dan. Jessica decides to leave him, taking responsibility for the kids and calls Gwen for help while Dan guards them outside. Despite Dan's warnings about McCaffrey's danger, Jessica tells him to ensure their safety and stay away. When Jessica meets with Gwen, she learns Gwen is more influential than expected and has been plotting revenge against an ex through a new alliance. McCaffrey calls Dan, revealing he has his family, and arranges a meeting at an abandoned hotel. McCaffrey, revealed to be Dan's father, sarcastically welcomes him and demands a return to work in exchange for his family's safety. Amidst this, the children's attitude shifts. They urge Jessica to protect Dan, despite their earlier desire to cut ties. During an elevator escape, Jessica uses a diaper to distract and eliminate one of McCaffrey's men, deciding to rescue Dan. As McCaffrey makes arrangements, Gwen attempts to seduce Dan back into a relationship, ignoring the tech guy who is aware of Dan's tactics. The family arrives to save Dan, putting Gwen to sleep and taking the tech guy captive. Dan apologizes to Jessica for his secrets and vows to be truthful and devoted. Meanwhile, McCaffrey awakens Gwen to locate the family, but despite heavy gunfire, no one manages to hit Dan. Jessica prepares the kids for an ambush as they reach the roof, while Gwen taunts her, confident in her hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Kyle notes there are nine guys left, and Dan systematically takes them down. McCaffrey, feeling triumphant, shoots down the drone. Amidst this, Gwen overpowers Jessica in a fierce catfight, trapping her under the rubble. Meanwhile, McCaffrey gets the upper hand on Dan, knocks him down, and prepares to shoot him, but wastes time boasting about how the family has weakened Dan. At the same time, Gwen corners the kids, which unexpectedly gives Jessica the strength to free herself from the debris. Despite this, Dan cleverly removes the bullets from McCaffrey's gun, forcing them into hand-to-hand -hand combat. Jessica, mustering all her strength, grabs a bamboo stick and attempts an ambitious jump to strike Gwen, but fails. Gwen finds amusement in Jessica's efforts until Jessica tries again and succeeds this time. McCaffrey bests Dan in their physical altercation and aims a gun to finish him, but the family intervenes. Na reassures Dan of their love and support, which distracts McCaffrey and allows Dan to take control. Eventually, the family reunites and the police arrive on the scene. Six months later, Na has become a renowned journalist. Dan has founded a self-defense training company and employs Augie, while Jessica becomes a coach. Kyle continues to produce videos online. The family prepares for a significant journey, packing an RV to take Na to Stanford. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.